Stefano Truck Series Racing. We are here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, and we are getting set for a 32-lap extravaganza. Everyone is set. The trucks are ready. So let's get into your starting lineup. Starting on pole is going to be the number 50 of Haruma Kakana, and to his outside is the number 61 of Steve Wright. In the second row, the number 85 of Matthew Wells is going to be on the inside of the number 22 of Bill Cox, former champion. Rising star, number 25, Jason Kranz, to, his, to the inside of the number 73, Steve Coffey, as well as Nathan Hellman, another rising star, inside of his teammate, number 77, Joe Palmer. Another former champion, the 80 of Derek Yarworth, starting inside of row 5, and to his outside is the 27 of Dalton Lucas. Rick Bomadano in the 56, starting 11th, and on his outside is the number is the 83 of Sarah Wells. Seventh row, the 54 of William Wells, and to his outside is the 64 of Steve Hickman. In the eighth row is the 42 of Adam Ames, former winner here at Indianapolis last year, and Greg Shivers in the 23, also a former winner here at Indianapolis. Ernest Crispin in the 33, on the inside of the 55 of Carlos Hernandez. Row number 10, Aaron Burnett in the 6, and number 70 of Matthew Trout in the 20th position. Row number 11, the number 17 of Denny Drexler, to his outside is the 94 of Aaron Davis. And in the next row behind them, Joe Allen in the number 4, and to his outside is the 20 of Zach Miller. In the 13th row, David Wilson in the 51, and to his outside is going to be the 40 of Don Garrett. In the next row, Chris Davis in the double-O Priola car, and then Otto Cummins in the 36. In row number 15, Joe Vigsung in the 10, and to his outside is the number 02 of Sam Aaron. Row 16, Mike Dill in the 30, and Marcus Daniels in the number 95. In the final row for the night's race, Craig Wiggle in the 11, and with an engine swap before the race started, Zachary Fitzgerald in the 15, and that's going to do it for your starting lineups here at Indianapolis. And we're getting set to go. Ready to take the green flag as we head down the long front straight away. Green flag is out and we are underway here at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Three, four trucks thundering into turn one for Rumikikana. A little bit of a better jump on the start there, but look at Jason Kranz making it three wide with Matthew Wells. That's going to actually hurt Bill Cox even more than it hurt Matthew Wells, but that's going to get the 25 truck all the way up into third place. And what a great move that he did right there. And he's trying to make it up into second place, but I don't know if he's going to be able to do it as he makes a move under the 61 of Steve Wright, but I don't think Steve Wright's going to get that one up too easily. As we come down the long front straightaway, Haruma Kakana will lead lap number one here at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. It looks like everything's kind of getting a little bit single file back until you get about fourth row. Back here on lap number five, the 61 of Steve Wright looking to make a almost contact there in turn one. But Wright was able to keep it off of Kakana's quarter panel. And now you have a new leader. The 61 of Steve Wright has taken the lead. We'll see, though, if he can lead the lap, as Jason Kranz is one of those drivers who's very dangerous to have right on your back bumper. You do not know when he's going to make a move. Because he usually tries to hide it by making kind of the obvious move first, and then eventually you just don't know when he's going to go. And that's really the thing that Jason Kranz has been known for. And there he goes to the inside. Steve Wright will lead the lap, though, as Derek Yarworth following the 25 machine. And Jason Kranz now up to the lead. Derek Yarworth in the 80 truck, a former champion. Now right behind the hopefully would-be champion of Jason Kranz as he has done so much in this series since his rookie year of last season. 
And even with this AT&T team, which hasn't really been the best team as far as consistently, he's been able to take this team and do a lot of good things with it. And I wouldn't be surprised if uh, he gets moved up to Dorellis next year as they are affiliated uh, with, this, with that team. However, Derek Yarworth making the move to the inside. Jason Kranz not going to be fighting him for it. Wants to get right on the back bumper of Derek Yarworth so that way he can try to make a move right back to take the lead again. As we head down the back stretch, Derek Yarworth with Jason Kranz right on his back bumper. Jason Kranz now moving in to try and make a counter move in turn, four, in, uh, turn three, but will not be able to pull it off as he will slot right back behind Derek Yarworth in the 80. Derek Yarworth has been kind of one of those drivers who's better on the big tracks, not so much on the short tracks, as you see Jason Kranz making another move to the inside, about the same spot that he did it the last time, and he's going to be able to get it this time. He had, much, he had a much better run on the back of the 80 truck, and Derek Yarworth doing the exact same thing, which is just letting the 25 take the lead as he wants to get himself back in the lead as quickly as possible. Rick Bomadano not threatening the 80 truck, but I don't think he's going to be able to do much with it. As Yarworth will have the draft from the 5. That will kind of screw up with uh, Greg Shivers, though, as he wasn't able to clear the 56, and now they're going to have to fight. However, Greg Shivers moves back behind the 56 truck, and they're going to be back, back in line as well. So a lot of single file going on early here in the race right now. As we continue to run, some of the better drivers that we've seen so far this season, Nathan Hellman has shown a lot of promise uh, for that Dre Racing team. It's been rumored that the MSCA has actually said that they will go to new body styles. As we go a little bit further forward here, Jason Kranz still your leader. However, Nathan Hamlin going to try to make a move to the inside. He's going to look into turn three. That hasn't worked before, but it looks like it might work now as the driver of the five. Nathan Hamlin now battling with Jason Kranz. The two young guns, both rookies last season. Jason Kranz didn't get as good of a jump with the equipment that Nathan Hellman has, as Dre Racing has some of the best equipment around, but you gotta admit, Jason Kranz, with what he's been able to do with that equipment, is pouring it on the rest of this field right now. However, Nathan Hellman, your current leader now, is the two Mountain Dew trucks. Funnily enough, not on the same team, Greg Shiver's actually on uh, GSR. While I believe the 61 is part of Dorellis Motorsports. Dorellis Motorsports being one of the younger teams to join in the uh, the series. As Nathan Hellman continues to lead in that Dre Racing Ford. And caution is out, and it we're getting we're seeing a huge crash off of turn four. And into the onto the pit entrance, a big incident. As multiple cars are piled up. We're gonna see how this started though. As Joe Palmer was the main catalyst. It looks like he got a little bit squeezed by the 22. That might be on, uh, that might just be on the, uh, the 22 as far as who can take the blame, but it could be anyone, any of those drivers that were involved, and that's really all that happened to the 77. He kind of got spun into the outside wall. A few cars came up, clipped him, but this is where the big incident happens. Aaron Burnett in the six car caused a huge pileup on the front straightaway. A lot of drivers who we really wouldn't see up at the front of the pack. Most of these guys are underfunded. And that is a huge incident as we're going to watch with Zachary Fitzgerald on the Pentrex on board. And oh man, he did not slow down as much as I believe he should have. Misjudged it and just last of the front end of that car off. However, we're going to get back to green here as Nathan Howland in the five leads him back to green. They did take pit stops over this uh, over this first set of uh, caution flags, so they're going to be able to get themselves 
refueled, get some new tires on the cars and the, on the trucks, and they're gonna be able to uh, get back to the speeds that they started off with, make a few adjustments before the uh, the real thing gets going. And I don't believe there will be another pit stop as this race is short enough that they won't really need another pit stop. Greg Shivers in the 23. Hasn't hasn't been up at the front all day, but now currently running like he has been up at the front all day. And these and uh, he's one of the drivers who we usually see up at the front with his teammate Bill Cox. Both of those drivers are usually some of the best in the business. And right now, Greg Shivers being trailed by Jason Kranz right now in that 25 machine. Jason Kranz looking to try and make a move as he's just constantly stayed up at the front of this pack. Same with Nathan Hellman, same with Derek Yarworth. All three of those guys have been just constantly up at the front. You can see, uh, you can see, I believe that's, uh, William Wells? I don't believe, uh, yes, that is William Wells. In the 54 truck, black Dodge, that black and blue Dodge. One of, the first, one of the few times we'll see him up at the front. You can see Adam Gaines. He was one of the former winners of this race. He's moved in to a pretty decent position behind the 73 of Steve Coffey as we continue to watch the 25 stock, the leader of Greg Shivers. We're going to move a little bit ahead, though, as the 25 continuing to stock the 23. Not able to make any moves to get by, but now he makes the move here on lap 20 with only... A with uh, almost 10 to go, this is when drivers start getting a little bit impatient, start making a little bit um, more uh, crazy moves. And right there, Jason Kranz didn't have to do too much with that, and he's going to be able to get that car back up into the lead. And now Jason Kranz looking like he might have to take on a challenge from Greg Shivers, as Shivers is side by side with him, but it looks like I was going to say Kranz was going to have the draft coming into the corner, but he did not get any help in the corner, but was able to stay up at the top and, and uh, defend the, the uh, position from Greg Shivers and then get the uh, get the draft coming on the, on the uh, front straightaway. So Jason Kranz continues to lead here as Greg Shivers desperately trying to make something happen in that 23 Mountain Dew truck. He's also got Nathan Hellman in the five truck behind him, as well as uh, his teammate Bill Cox in the 22. So there might be some strategy plays going on here, but if you know Bill Cox as well as I think Greg Shippers knows Bill Cox, then uh, a few interesting things might go on here as far as where that 22 might end up in a few laps, and where the 23 will probably end up in a few laps as well. There was a little bit of blocking going on, it looks like, there. The 23 kind of came down low. It looked like he might have been uh, looking for a pass on the 25, but just wasn't close enough at all. And in fact, it looked like he just shuffled the 5 car completely out of there. So an interesting move by GSM teammates. And then now Bill Cox making a move on his teammate. And if that statement holds true, if you know Bill Cox as much as Greg Shivers knows Bill Cox, you can give him some help, but I don't know if he'll give you the help right back. I think he'll just take the help and go wrong with it. That's usually what Bill Cox does, and that's gotten him a lot of victories over the years. Not the best teammate in the world, but he'll take your help when you give it to him. However, you can see there is a lap car ahead as we skip for forward a few more laps. We're now on lap 24. Sarah Wells, who was involved in that first incident, very slow on the racetrack. MSC officials have stated that she has met the minimum speed requirement. And considering it's only one car, it shouldn't be that big of a deal, but sometimes things can happen as they come down the front straightaway. And, oh, something did happen! Contact between Cox and Kranz. Huge contact in the back. Gaines involved, David Wilson involved, it looked like might have been Matthew Wells and Steve 
right, Ernest Crispin is the 33 truck that we're looking at right now. And a lot of the leaders are gone from this race. And Jason Kranz, a dominant force in this one. That car is smoking, and it looks like he might have just blown it up on the infield there. A disappointment for Jason Kranz. Getting wrecked out like that is definitely not going to make him feel good as we watch the race back to the line. Nathan Howland will take the race back to the line. He will most likely be the one restarting the race again. We're going to watch back. We're going to look at Bill Cox's CSM group on board. As we see, it looks like he just came out a little bit early and Jason Kranz didn't really uh, anticipate that. And that's what got Jason Kranz sent around. He pretty much just pit maneuvered himself here as we think on his onboard. And one thing I think Bill Cox has said beforehand is that you've got to know when to make your move, especially on lap traffic. Because you got to pull out at the right time, and when you do, you're going to make the pass, or you're going to make the other guy regret that he didn't do it faster. Looks like that was one of those cases. As we get back to green flag racing, Nathan Hellman in the five will lead them back to green. As we see pretty much a five car breakaway. I believe that uh, Sarah Wells might have been holding up some of the field as we do go single file restarts within 10 laps to go. And I don't believe Sarah Wells was uh, told to go into the pits. So she did hold up a few drivers up on the restart, but there are so many wrecked cars that it didn't really matter, as these five are pretty much the only ones that are going to be looking for the victory. Greg Shivers and Nathan Hellman have been kind of the other two drivers that really have been doing a whole lot. Derek Yarworth has been another one of those drivers who's kind of been up in the field. Uh, hasn't really led a whole lot, but has just kind of been up there. Meanwhile, Greg Shivers making a pass on the lead. Two laps remaining, and you've got to make your passes, and you've got to make them count. So Greg Shivers getting himself up to the lead. But now he's in a conundrum because he's got two teammates sitting second and third with Steve Coffey and Nathan Hellman in the five. He's, so he's got to hope that the 50 tries to break this grouping up or he might be in real trouble coming in this next lap or so. Coming out of turn four, the white flag is in the air. Greg Shivers holding the lead, but the two teammate cars of Steve Coffey and Nathan Hellman continue the, the, to dog the back of the 23 truck as they head down into turn two and down the back straightaway. No one seems to be making a move yet. They might be waiting for the right time. There it goes. Both cars, both Fords, pull out at exactly the right time. They pull out almost, almost at the same time. And Steve Coffey being helped to the top of the leaderboard as they come down the final time down the front stretch. Steve Coffey in a last lap move. A great pass to win the race here at Indianapolis. And a beautiful move, a coordinated move with his teammate there, Nathan Hellman, to finish off that race and get the victory for Dre Racing. What a beautiful move, and what a beautiful ending to this one. And that's going to do it for Indianapolis here for the MSC Racing Network. We hope to see you soon. See you and good night.